Anish Shroff here with Chris Tabor, special teams coordinator turned interim head coach. Not the situation you want, I know, when you take over, but um, what was your sort of first message to the rest of the coaching staff in the locker room? The message was we have a job to do, and, and we're all pros, and, and we have to handle ourselves like pros. It, it, it is a tough spot. Um, you know, you, you haven't won as many games as what you wanted to. Uh, you've had some injuries and, and those things, but it has to be next man up. And I just, we, I expect you just to do your job at the highest level. And it's my job to help you achieve that. And if we can work on that together, then we give ourselves a, a chance to put ourselves in position to win. When you go back to last year being in this position, what did you feel changed that allowed the Panthers to get on a bit of a run? You know, it's, it, it's hard to say. Um, because I think, I think when you, you comment on things like that, I think you're um, maybe saying negative things about what happened previously, and I never like going there. Um, I, I just think it's, I don't, you don't want to call it luck, but I think you, you, know, you finally see your preparation and your work, and it all kind of comes together, and, and then you start making some plays, and then in this game, it's about confidence. And then guys begin to get more confident, and then and all of a sudden you get you get on a roll. So uh, hopefully we can just kind of continue to work on our process and, and keep working to get better because that's that's what we're we're supposed to do. And then maybe you know we can turn the tide. I know uh, you were the special teams coordinator. People may not know you were once a quarterback too. <laughs> Tell us about playing quarterback with St. Benedictine College. Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas. It's uh, it's home of Amelia Earhart, actually, uh, right there on the Missouri River. But uh, I, I, I grew up as a, as a coach's kid. My dad was a longtime high school football coach in the state of Missouri, and God rest his soul, he's in the Missouri High School Hall of Fame. And uh, really, my idol. He he actually coached uh, Mike Rucker. In, oh, wow. in high school, yep, and I've known Mike since he, he was little and obviously turned out to be a great player and more importantly a great person. Uh, but I just always wanted to be my dad and that, that's really what I strive to be and, and uh, you know, I hope he's looking down uh, from heaven right now and smiling. Uh, but you know, I had the opportunity to play quarterback at Benedictine College and it was, it was an area, it was a small school that had a lot of success and I played for a great legendary Hall of Fame coach and, and Larry Wilcox who just retired a couple years ago. Uh, but I knew I wanted to get into coaching and that place allowed me, I had an opportunity to play and have some success and, and had you know, made great friends. Uh, you know, my wife went to school there and, and, and everything. So it was, it was a great place and, and a neat deal. You mentioned your dad being that first coaching influence. What are a few things you took away from him that have helped you as a coach? Oh, simple. The, the, the one that resonates with me is uh, being on the front porch on a summer day, kind of hanging out, and one of his former players who had graduated, may have been in college or is, is a grown man now, stops to they, they, they say, hey, where's coach? I want to see coach. And as a kid, I said, boy, my dad really influenced somebody. So. I saw my dad make relationships with, with people. Forever a coach. Forever a coach. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and that's what I took from it. I got in, I love football, I, I, I do, but I, I love the relationships that you build with the players because really at the end of the day, um, you're, if I see a player 20 years down the road, we're not going to talk about a game. We're going to talk about those moments in the meeting room in the cafeteria, those, th those type of things that, that brought us together. And to me, that's, that's what's neat about coaching. This isn't your first head coaching opportunity either. I know people talk about the one game stint with Chicago, but tell me about Culver Stockton. Culver Stockton, so I was uh, coaching at the University of Missouri before that, and our staff got let go. And so I decided, I w I've always wanted to be a head coach. And this opportunity came, small school, and they hadn't won in 20 years and uh, we went and turned it around in, in, in the first year. And to this day, I will probably always say one of the greatest learning moments I, I'd ever had. And, th and those kids that played for me. What did you learn? I learned how to be a, a better coach, how to handle people better. I was a young coach, uh, probably full of fire and brimstone, and trying to, uh, you know, you see some coaches that, that yell and they think that's coaching, that's not coaching. I, I learned how to, I think, to be a better communicator there. And, and those kids, uh, boy, they played their tail off and they were a fun group to be around. And, and uh, it's, it's fun going back to what we're talking about, it's fun to hear from those guys. As you kind of look at 
what these next six games represent in terms of uh, an opportunity for you and, and for the players on the field. You know, what is your message to um, a locker room that you know, needs to find uh, just some victory somewhere, right? Yeah, I, I think the message is this. It's, it's, it's simple. Let's, we're going to stay together. We're going to have some fun, but we're going to do it the right way. And that'll set us up to have success. And I think that's, we're only going to be with each other. You, you, you never know. Players go, coaches go. But this is our one time together. And let's not lose sight of that. And let's, uh, let's support each other and let's go. Chris Tabor, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you.